Hello and welcome to Tutorial to You. My name is Yannick and in this video you will learn how you can create a very cool ASP.NET Core application using a real world API and fusion charts to display the content inside of a very nice looking chart. You should definitely watch the video till the very end because we have an exercise for you. Now this video is sponsored by Fusion Shards and we will use this plugin to create a very cool spider chart right here. So without further talking, let's get started. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you no longer miss any cool content. Awesome. So the first thing that we have to do is we go to fusioncharts.com. You can find the link in the description below. Go to developers and then go to Fusion Shards Suit XT. Here, simply go ahead and check plain JavaScript. You can for sure find other applications here too, like React, Angular, so nearly everything what you can find in a front end stack. Let me click on plain JavaScript here. Now, you can see that HTML head tag here, which includes a JavaScript file, Fusion Shards, and another one for the theme. Now, let's scroll down until you can find, well, rendering the chart because here we got everything inside, the HTML, the head tag, including the scripts, and we also have some JavaScript inside here for rendering our first data. So we will start from here. Go ahead and copy everything from that box and we will paste it right inside a new project and then take care about rendering real data instead of this, well, hard-coded data. Here I have a new ASP.NET Core Model View Controller application. So we're doing that in the MVC template and I'm in Visual Studio 2020 and for sure we use .NET 6 here. Okay, so now let's set up our project structure. So we will create a controller and a view and inside of that view, we will then go ahead and paste what we have just copied. So select your controllers folder, right click on it and add a new controller. You can take the MVC controller, the MT1. We can call it weather controller. Now go ahead and delete the home controller. We don't need that one anymore. Go into your views folder. You can also remove the home folder here and then add a new folder inside of your views folder. So right click, add a new folder, call it weather. And inside of that new created weather folder, you wanna add a new view. And we can simply call that view index. Great, now open up your shared folder and open layout sees HTML. Scroll a little bit down until you can find those actions here. So we can completely remove the privacy one. So remove the list item. There we go. And here we have the ASP controller index action. Let's rename it to weather controller. So weather controller index action, you can call it home, that's fine. We just wanna make that template working. Now the last thing that we have to do, go to program.cs, scroll to the very bottom until you can find the map controller route. And this one is configured to use the home controller, which is not existing anymore. So change it to weather controller to set the default homepage of your application. So what should get started when you launch the application? And we wanna to go to weather and then index action. Great, so now we have completely switched over to use the weather controller instead of the default home controller. Now let's close program.cs and layout. So right now, here we are inside of the index.cs HTML of the weather controller. Let's simply paste everything what we have just copied from Fusion Shards. So let me remove that and paste what we have copied. Let's save it like this and hit controller 5 to start the application. Now, once the application is running, you can immediately see one of the charts provided by Fusion Charts. So we can definitely see that the JavaScript and the theme is running. And when we take a look at the code in the CS HTML, you can see that everything that you can see is configured inside here. Now let's see how we can grab real data. And once we have everything set up and grab the data, we will for sure take a look on how we can change the actual chart type to use a spider chart instead of a default chart here. Here we got the API that you will use for this application. It's called Meteostat and it's provided on Rapid API. So you can go ahead, sign up here for free and then click on pricing and subscribe to this Meteostat. So you have like 500 requests per month, which are completely free. 
There are two endpoints here which we will use. So inside of this video here, we will implement the monthly station data endpoint. So we will grab weather information for a whole year for a specific weather station. We will provide you a weather station ID, which we can then use to grab the data. If you want to find the station on your own, you can go ahead and use the nearby station's endpoint. You can, for example, run the endpoint directly inside here or for sure in Postman or something else. So click on monthly station data. Now we need two things from this page. We need the Rapid API key and the Rapid API host. Okay, so go ahead and sign up for Rapid API and then subscribe to this Meteostat API, which you can use for free. Afterwards, keep that window open because you will need your API key. Now let's send a request to the Meteostat API. First of all, go into the weather controller and start using the system.net and using system.net HTTP so that we are able to create web requests. Inside of the index action result, we will later on put the code in its own method, but for now we will stay here. Now, first of all, we need to have the URL. So let's create it var URL and for sure we set it to the API URL and then include the endpoint. So I just pasted the URL right here. You can for sure find it in the description below or check out our GitHub repository. Let's take a look. So the URL is https meteostat.p.rapidapi.com. You can find that on the Rapid API page, which we have just discovered. And the endpoint is slash stations slash monthly. Now afterwards, we have three parameters, right? You can see that indicated by the question mark. First parameter is station equals to a specific ID. That ID here is the station placed in New York. You can go ahead and use the nearby endpoint on the page to find another station by providing longitude and latitude position. So if you search for a station near your hometown, simply find out or Google for your latitude and longitude position for that specific city and provide the longitude and latitude information in the nearby endpoint on Rapid API. Afterwards, we have two more parameters, which is start and end. Start 1st of January 21 and end 1st of January 22. So we search for New York weather data for whole year 2021 to 2022. Awesome. Now let's proceed here and send a request to that specific URL. So simply go ahead and create a new request var request equals to let's uh, create a cast here web request. And there we go. We get AI auto completion web request create URL. So we send or we create a web request for that URL. Let's set the request dot method. Let's set it to get because we want to grab some data. We don't want to create data, right? So this is why we use get not post. And then we need to provide two headers. So request dot headers. We want to go ahead and add one. The first one is X rapid API key. We will set this to the API key just in a second. And the second header here is request headers, set it to X rapid API host. Great. So on your page, at Rapid API, you can find both the informations as we have earlier discovered. So the host is meteostat.p.rapidapi and here you can see a part of my API key. So go ahead and fill it out. Now next up, let's send our request using var web response. And there you go, response is equals to request.get response. So here we got our response. Now we can create another using here again for the stream web stream equals to let's use our web response dot get response stream. Awesome. Now again, another using for reading var reader equals to new stream reader configured for the web stream. And now we can grab our data. So var data equals to reader dot read to end. Great. Now, this is all we have to do. And in order to test it, we make it pretty straightforward and set a breakpoint to line 26, save the page and start the application in debugger mode. So simply press on the green start button on the top of your screen. Once the application is loading, 
it will for sure automatically go ahead to the weather controller and open up the index action result because we configured the program.cs to make the weather controller index action as the start action. Now you can see if we hold the cursor here above data and click on that drop down here and then take the JSON visualizer, we can see that we have the data here for all the month. So January 21 up to January 22. So those are in total 13 months, right? So we don't need the last one to grab the whole year of 2021. However, if we take a look, you can see the average here, which is in January, something like 1.4 degree. And for, let's take a look here. Here we got August, you can see 24 degree, right? So we can assume that this is correct. You can see daily min, daily max, and all of this. Great, so now we have our data, well, in JSON format provided from our API. Now we need to go ahead and take that JSON, convert it into a C Shop object, and then provide this to Fusion Charts. Just a quick reminder, never forget to take a look at tutorials.eu, right? So we also have that website with the blog, with courses, with more information, an awesome newsletter where you can subscribe to grab some really cool content. We have a Discord channel and so much more. So definitely check out our website too. So here at Fusion Charts, at the render the chart part again, this is also what we have inside of our view you can see those label and value in the chart data, right? So this is the structure that we are building or that we need to build. So here we got data source, we got a caption, sub caption. Yeah, and we need to build that in order to later on deliver it from ASP controller to the view and then render it inside Fusion Charts JavaScript plugin. Okay, now let's proceed and build the C-Sharp record structure to take all the information that we have and the response and build it in a way so that we can send it to Fusion Shards to actually render it. Inside of our project, we create a new folder and we call that read models. And inside of that read models folder, right click again to create a C-Sharp class. Now call that class weather data rm, rm for read model. Great, so now we need to go ahead and create multiple data structures. And usually you would go ahead and put all of these single classes or records in their own files, but I wanna give you a great overview. So I will keep everything inside of one C-sharp file. So I really wanna mention that if you wanna build a real world application, you definitely put all of these records and classes in separate files, right? So this is best practice, but for now, in terms of visibility and overview, I will keep everything here inside of one single class. Now, first of all, we wanna switch from being the weather data RM a class, switch it over to be a record. Now, the main difference between records and classes is that the record is immutable. So once it's initialized and once it has some values, they cannot get changed, right? In a class, if you create an instance of an object, you can for sure go ahead and switch the content of the fields. But in a record, that's not possible. Also, one of the nice advantages is that we can go ahead and initialize fields and properties inside here of a parameter. So inside of the parentheses, let's keep it like this. We will come back to that again. Now let's get started by creating a public record, make sure you're outside of this record right here. So public record, this is a label or we call it label and it consists of a field called label data type string. Next up, we go ahead, public record. This is the data and the data consists of a double also value. Next up, we got the data set. So public record, call it data set. And this one consists of string, series name, and list of type data, call it data. So this, we can find this data object here for sure being type of record. Now we're nearly done, public record. This is the chart. And for this, we need some more. So let's go ahead and bring that in the next line, string, caption, string, sub caption, string number prefix, string theme, which is the style for sure, and string radar fill color. So this is already for our spider chart in the end. Okay, and the last thing that we need is again, public record category this time, and it's type of list label, which we have created at the very top of the script category. There we go. 
And now finally we have our weather data read model and this one is consisting of all the other elements. So here we have a chart which we'll create and then submit here. We have a list of category and this is categories and for sure we have list of data set this time for our data. So data set. There we go. Okay. Inside of our weather controller, we already well send a request to the API and get a response. Now we need to take that response, which is in JSON format. So in order to read it in a JSON format, we need a package, which is Newtonsoft JSON. So go ahead, click on tools at the top side of your screen, NuGet package manager, and then manage NuGet packages for solution. And then on the left side, click on browse, not on installed, and search for Newtonsoft. There we go. Newtonsoft JSON. It's well one of the first things that you will see when you write down JSON and Newtonsoft, right? So select your application. This one's called Weather Spider, and hit install. Now once that's done, we can close it again. Go to the weather controller, scroll up, and add a using directive. So go ahead and start using Newtonsoft.json, or to be more specific, using Newtonsoft.json dot link. Okay, so now we are ready to actually access the data right here. So the response of the API, which is in JSON format. Let's now take our data that we have right here and well, read it by JSON object and the tokens. So the fields inside of the JSON and then build out our data for the chart. So what we do is we create a J object here. Let's call it JSON and we take J object dot parse so we now parse that data response that we have here into a j object inside of our j object which we have called json we can find a key with the name data and inside there there is our valuable data right so let's create a j token which is nothing else than think about it like a property or like a field and we call it data token for example and we take our j object right and access the key which is called data. So this is what we get in our response from the API. So just to make that clear, we got our data response. We now convert it into a J object, right? So this is just so that we can access it from C sharp and inside of our JSON response from the API, we got a field called data and that's what we are accessing here. Now, every child in that data, you can see this in the response. We got like, if we ask for 13 months or 12 months, we got like 12 elements, right? So next up, we will create an IEnumerable of type J token. Let's call it year equals to data token dot children. So let's say we have the data, which is consisting of like 13 elements or 12. So January, February for year 2021, right? So we have children inside of that data, like 12. Think about it as an array, right? And here we take data token, the children. So here in the end will be an enumerable of J token with in the end 12 elements, for example. Now we take our enumerable year here and bring that into our custom record type uh, data. So let's start creating a list of type data. Go ahead and import the namespace here, weather spider read models, right? So inside that namespace, we got the data record structure. Let's call it data for chart. And it's a new list of type data. What we do next is we write a simple for each loop. So write down for each, press tab tab, call it var item, which is month in our year. So we loop, loop through that year collection here and we simply access the data for chart list and add a new element. So let's create a new data here and simply submit the value, which is month. So we access that JSON field, right? And inside there, we have a field called TAVG, which is for the average. And our new data object requires this value to be a double. Great, and that's all we have to do. So now we have our data for chart. So we now go ahead and set up the structure for the weather data read model, which contains the caption, the name, the theme, the radar, fill color, and all of this, including our data and send it over into the view. Let's create a new weather data read model. So var rm call it read model like this, right? And then let's set a new weather data read model. 
And inside there we get, as we have discovered it earlier, let me open that, here we got the weather data rig model, we got a chart, a list of category and a list of data set. Even though we only have one data set, well, the structure of the Fusion Charts plugin needs it to be data set. So let's go ahead and insert the values here. First of all, we create a new chart. So let's go ahead and say chart is equals to new chart. And all of the structures that we are using are records. So go ahead and don't write down curly braces. We initialize all of them inside of the parentheses. So new chart and that new chart has a caption and the caption is weather in New York, for example, right? So our station is based in New York. So you can for sure go ahead and modify all of this depending on your selection. Then we have sub caption. Sub caption is for example, based on data collected last year. Next up, we got the num prefix. We can keep that empty string. And then we have theme and theme can be fusion. You can definitely check out the documentation of fusion charts and find other elements. And we have the radar fill color and I want that to be six times F three, five, six. There we go. Now, next up, let's create the list of categories. So categories is equals to a new list of category. And inside of that new list, we have a new category object. And that one again is a record. So use the parentheses is a new list of type label there we go automatically fold out and here we have 12 labels for 12 months right so label one would be like january and then we do this 12 times in total okay so i repeated this step a couple of times you can now see new labels right so for each month awesome and the last thing that we have to do is afterwards create that data set data set there we go and it's a new list of data set Inside there, we create a new data set. Again, use the parentheses, not curly braces to initialize. And we provide the value which is required. So it's serious name. Let's give it a name like temperature average. And finally, let's provide the data. So data for chart. There we go. Okay, so now we have that data set complete. And this is how our, well, data has to be structured. Okay, now in the end, there's one parenthesis missing to close the object. There we go. Okay, so now that everything here is done, let me just copy the whole code inside of that I action. So I'm going to copy that and remove it. Now what we want to do is we want to build this in a real API method. So instead of making the request to the API inside of the index view, we want to go ahead and build its own method for it. We create a simple I action. This time we attach HTTP get because we want to call that from JavaScript public I action result. Let's call it simply weather. Let's paste in the code that we have just copied. Now, what we want to do is we want to return an OK status code here, including our read model. Great. So once we are in the index view, take a look at fusion shards. We can simply go ahead and call that endpoint here, whether from our view or from anywhere else and grab the information in JSON format. Inside of the index CSHTML, we already got some fusion shard information here. Let's really reduce that. So first of all, I'm going to remove the HTML tag, which is wrapping it. And then I simply keep the head element here, but I will remove that one so that we only have those informations right here you can see that in a second so here we get the head don't need that closing tag and we got the next head there we go this is all we really need for now great and now i'll also remove the body text because we don't need them here so in the end we have the head and the single diff which will be our container for the fusion chart xt you can see that here fusion shards will load here now let's create a script here. And if you want to run it from inside of that view, you have to create a section. So write down add section and call it scripts. And it has to be named exactly like this. If you're more interested in it, go ahead and check out the layout file in the shared folder. Now inside here, we can create a script tag. And inside of that script tag, we will now go ahead and initialize fusion shards, or we will make use of 
a ready function here. So when Fusion Shorts is ready, go ahead and start an asynchronous function. Async function, there we go, exactly like this. And inside of that async function, we want to go ahead and first of all call our endpoint and take the response. So constant response equals to await because it's async. And then we call the fetch function and we fetch from localhost. So write down HTTPS, don't forget that. And then localhost. And then whatever your port is, for me it's 7219. So go ahead and check it in your browser. And then the endpoint is called weather inside of the weather controller. So use weather slash weather, right? Because here we got the weather controller and here we got the weather action. There we go. This is why we use weather slash weather. And this returns us the data that we need. Now we take this and turn this into a JSON. So call JSON resp await, take that promise response, turn it into JSON. Sorry, JSON, there we go. So this response here, this is a promise because we are waiting it and then we take the result and turn it into a JSON format or into a JSON object. Now let's create a chart, so var chart equals to new fusion charts object. And inside of that instantiation, we can well specify a lot of uh, stuff and you can check out the fusion shards documentation. For example, the type of the shard should be radar, right? So here, that's the most interesting one, I guess. You can choose whatever you like. We wanna render it, sorry, render at, gonna render it at the chart container and this is the diff right here you can see the ID is matching afterwards we can also specify other elements like width with 600 for example we write that down as a string and height you can also go ahead and set it to uh, 300 for example what else do we have data format right so our source is in the format of JSON. And finally, very important, the data source, right? And the data source is the JSON response. So make sure that you don't write the JSON response here in, as a string. So there are no single quotes or double quotes, right? It's referencing the JSON response object here. So make sure that you don't miss that, else you will see that uh, that message of Fusion Charts, which is saying invalid data. Now, finally, also don't miss that. Once you're done, you want to call that render function here, just at the parentheses and we're good to go. So render. Yeah, and for sure here we have to say response and not response, right? So there we go. Now let me switch over to the weather controller. I adjusted two things. First of all, I set the month or the date range from 1st of January 21 to well, 31 of December 21. So really 365 days, right? Not one single day more. And I also switched the station. However, you can for sure, as I said, take a look at the description below. You will find the correct string there. Now let's start our application. Awesome. So as you have seen, the data is now set up and you can see how the average looks like in New York City when you use the spider chart. Let's go ahead and style that a little bit more. All right, and this is the final result. So I really made just some changes regarding to the layout. I removed the nav bar and the footer, centered everything, made our chart a little bit bigger, added a text and added a form, but the form has no functionality yet because now here comes the part where you can get active. So this is our challenge for you. We will provide you exactly this here in our GitHub repository, right? And if you would like, and if you feel confident enough to take that challenge, go ahead and implement a way where you can write down here any city name, click on how warm is it there. And in the back end, that city name then gets sent to the API to find stations. So use the slash nearby endpoint and afterwards pick one station and use it to grab the actual weather data from that city and display it here. It's definitely not that easy, but that's fine. So this could really be a very nice exercise for you. And if you follow along all of our videos, you should really be able to get that done. So I hope you enjoyed that video and had fun following along. If you have any questions or if you want to share your solution for this project, write a comment below, attach the source code in the GitHub repository and we will pin it here. 
don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't subscribed already because you don't want to miss any of our nice content. Thanks for watching and see you next time and good luck with that exercise.